Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at a tool called FakeNet by the Flare team at Mandiant Google. And the goal with FakeNet is to help us to get a, a simulated network environment inside of our analysis, v, analysis VMs and not allowing them to connect out to the internet. Uh, before we get started, please consider subscribing and uh, then of course liking and adding any comments to this video. Appreciate the feedback and the interaction, and I'll do my best to answer any questions or you know address any issues that you find with this content. Um, okay, so to get started, we'll take a look at uh, the Flare FakeNet NG. This is, you can find this project um, available on this GitHub. And uh, we're, there's, there's, there's more about this tool than we're gonna get into. I just wanted to show you sort of the basics of using it to help with analysis, particularly with malware analysis. Now, um, in order to get started then, you can download the code and or grab the release. Let's take a look at this page here. Um, you'll see that there is the fake net. It's just a zip file. We'll explore that zip file in a moment. Now, as for our sample program and maybe a po you know, possible scenario as to why you would utilize something like this, uh, I'm gonna take a look at a, my learning malware analysis repository. And under dynamic analysis, you're going to find a program called dynamic underscore analysis C. And this is the program that we're going to explore. Uh, I created this a couple years ago and it's a little bit busy in here. I should probably come back at some point and break some of this content out. Uh, but this will be the foundation for our sample binary. Now that I'm done showing you a couple things on the internet, I'm going to switch my VM, the network mode into host only. And that is more of a standard mode that I have my network in when doing any sort of malware analysis, host only. That way, if I accidentally execute something or if it reaches out to the internet, um, I'm not worried about um, that connection going out, any follow on activity that maybe I'm not ready to analyze or certainly letting the adversary know that I'm investigating or looking into their malware. So for this program, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. And if you go to the main method, all I really want is to look at the functionality here through what I have called initialize and then make HTTP requests. And the idea with the initialize function is that I have three domains that are all encrypted with an, a single byte XOR key. And so what you see here is the result of that encryption. So this is, uh, you know, the ciphertext. This is the domain now that when we, when we compile this and analyze this program statically, we can't tell what these domains are. So what initialize is going to do is to simply copy those byte values into this array of domains and then when we go to make HTTP request, it's going to decrypt those. You'll see there's a decrypt function right here. It's just going to loop over every byte XORing it with our hard coded key before then using or making using that domain, that decrypted domain for call to internet open URL. All right. So we're not going to worry too much about all of the APIs and stuff that's going on here. The, the, the gist of it is that it's going to, this program will make an HTTP request to these domains, but we don't know what the domains are. All right, so now if we didn't have the source, we could look at this program, you know, the executable, and I compiled that using Visual Studio. So you can take a look at the instructions on the GitHub repo. Um, so if we receive the binary, then this would be more like, you know, a typical malware analysis workflow. And that we don't necessarily, we can't, maybe we recognize through the imports that we have potential internet connectivity, calls to internet open URL, internet close handle, internet open, all coming from the win init.dll. But when we look at the strings, we're not going to find any domains. We may find evidence of further internet connectivity, such as this Mozilla slash 4.0, which I used as the user agent, um, but we don't know what those domains are. So, you know, you could stop here and say, well, yeah, it's just a single byte XOR key, though. All we have to do is go to CyberChef. We could stat statically decrypt those. And that's true. But let's pretend that they were more, there was more of a complicated encryption algorithm um, and we just weren't entirely sure. So maybe we want to run, perform some dynamic analysis. Okay, this is where FakeNet comes in. You'll see that once you've downloaded the archive, extracted it, you'll have a folder that contains configs, default files, docs, listeners, and then the FakeNet application itself, the executable. Uh, in this video, we're not going to get into the configuration and any of the default listeners. It is a very highly customizable tool though. Um, the gist of it is that FakeNet, once we run it, it will provide basic network simulated services. It will, res it will respond to DNS queries, 
providing as the answer to the DNS query, the IP of the local host. It'll have different listeners to allow for connections then to be established over TCP, um, UDP requests, things like FTP and SMTP. And it at least provides or tries to provide a smart response. So while you're not gonna maybe get the entire command and control pattern teased out of a piece of malware, you'll at least be able to see that it will try to establish that connection. And so you'll, you'll, you'll likely be able to see that initial network activity where if you weren't allowing it to connect out, you didn't provide DNS resolution, you didn't even provide you know simple responders for popular protocols like HTTP, SMTP, or just raw TCP, you wouldn't even see that. Okay, in order to run this, I'm gonna open up an elevated command prompt. We're gonna go to the directory that contains our fake net executable, and then we're gonna run it. And what you'll see here is that it's going to make some modifications to your system. It's going to do things like change the configuration of your network adapter, and then it's just gonna start dropping, well, and it also opens up the uh, kind of the, the basic, once, once it's running, you'll see that um, it opens up a browser and it shows our fake net. This is the default HTTP listener. It also has an HTTPS listener. Um, so we don't really need that. Um, but what you're gonna see here now is that it's just gener generating output for all the network activity that it's handling. And so we're going to have, of course, noise coming from the operating system, such as uh, requests to Microsoft.com and network connectivity test, as you see here. That's all stuff that you can usually try to eliminate or, or you know quiet your system. Um, but we can see, anyway, we can see the activity. Uh, now, when we're ready to stop FakeNet, then we can, you can issue a control C and this will generate in the default directory, the directory where it's located, a PCAT file, all right? And so you can also through command line arguments tell FakeNet where to generate that PCAT. But the default here without any arguments, it's starting to listen, it's starting to respond. And then when we're done, it'll drop a PCAP file here. So we'll come back and look at that. And the reason I bring that up is so that you don't have to worry about trying to, you know, in interpret all of the output here in the console, because at times it can get very hard to keep up with because it's gonna always be auto scrolling. Uh, okay, right now it seems not to be, not a lot of network activity. And so I've got another command prompt open and we'll just run our dynamic analysis program. So we're not gonna see any activity here, but if we now go back to fake net, we'll see activity now that's coming from the program that we're analyzing. So I'm gonna stop fake net just so it doesn't continue to do any scrolling. Uh, it does take sometimes a couple of instances of hitting control C. Once you see stopping, then you know that it is in fact finally handling that control C and it is, it is shutting down. And it is helpful to let fake net stop itself because what it does is it'll it'll for the most part or it should anyway restore your network configuration options so that if you need to you know change the networking mode of the vm maybe you need to go back to nat or bro bridged or something um, as well as generate our pcap file all right so here we can see that we have a pcap and the size is what i'm looking at i know that once we have fake net you know has shut down cleanly It'll have written all the data to this PCAP file. So now we can open that up. But for this demo, we ended up getting some pretty decent output here. Um, and that we can just take a look at the fact that, you know, dynamic analysis.exe, that was our program. You know, first it received, FakeNet received a, a, a DNS request for evilcode.com. And then we see our program making a request to that host. Very similar request for dsu.edu, and then an HTTP request to that host. Finally, nsa.gov, and then finally, you know, and then subsequently that HTTP request. So that matches up with the source code that we analyzed earlier. But again, if we didn't know that, this would help to allow not only the program then to, to try to res, you know, resolve DNS and make these connections and, and make connections too, if it didn't have to do through DNS, maybe direct IP. Um, and then finally, if we wanna go back and analyze, we have the PCAP. We can use Wireshark as you typically would in order to uh, you know, apply filters and then investigate the traffic here. So here we have our, um, our DNS queries. We could then look at just those HTTP requests by removing the filter following that TCP stream or the HTTP. 
uh, and uh, and there it is. There's our HTTP request that was made by our, our full malware here. Um, and the response, as I said, the response is just going to come from FakeNet. And so it has a default page to handle HTTP requests and the response. And then you can customize this. So if you're interested in looking at possibly providing a more specific response based off of you know a sample that you're investigating, uh, you have the ability to do that, and that is documented on the GitHub, but a little bit beyond the time and the scope for this video. So um, what is FakeNet? FakeNet helps to simulate network services so that we can analyze malware and, and, and allow it to run in a VM without allowing it to connect out to the internet. So it's a great tool. It's very useful, and I hope you'll check it out.